Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new Grand Tactician, the Civil War series. This is going to primarily be a live stream series, and you get to see my face for the first time in one of these series. But I thought the opening episode would be better to pre record just because there's a lot of like housekeeping issues and kind of like getting started stuff that just makes more sense just to pre record it and get it all out there once we get into the actual action. We'll start doing live streams. So um, I wanted to kind of cover a couple of things as we dive into the game because the game's very different than it's ever been when I've started a series because of all the updates. And one of the updates is that they now have the ability to create your own avatar, create your own character in the game in general. Uh, so I'm making myself, just because I'm kind of curious to see how these created avatars actually do in the game now in order to do this you have to do it before you start the campaign uh, you can't add them once the campaign has begun so uh, you get a certain number of attribute points that you get to add into the game um, and uh, into your uh, character that you create and you can choose uh, things like whether they're a veteran a west point grad are they infantry cavalry artillery um, are they an engineer? Those kinds of things. We're going to go with West Point grad um, and infantry in this case. And you can actually switch that to volunteer if you want instead. Um, you can choose the birth date, their home state, things like that. And then you get to pour points into these things, leadership, administration. Uh, I'm actually going to go primarily leadership and administration because that's going to help with our ability to train our troops. And I think that'll be really helpful moving forward. So uh, that's kind of what we're going to go with right there. We'll create that guy. Uh, I might create one or two more uh, just because I'm going to be curious to see how they operate in the game. So uh, I'll, I'll do that and then we'll go ahead and dive into the choices for our campaign. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, we're going to go spring 1861. We are choosing the Confederacy. Uh, we are going to max out the difficulty and let me just show you again what this does it adjusts the ai national morale which is the primary means by which we win the the war is driving down that morale it makes it harder to do that uh the available recruits so we're going to have our hands full with the enemy having that many more recruits casualty ratios experience gain morale recovery military experience and fighting spirit so all of the the odds are as stacked against me as they can possibly be now aggressiveness this adjusts the ai behavior regard, regarding recruitment activity as well as probabilities of invasions and defensive operations uh, now we are not going to go very high we are going to go elevated because um it's already very hard difficulty and everything's stacked against me i just don't I don't think it is going to make for a very historical feeling game if he's just attacking everywhere all at once all the time because that's just not how it happened historically. So uh, we'll go elevated just to make it challenging, but we won't go all the way up to the highest. Now, we are going to choose our own policies. Uh, specific, I know exactly what I want here. Um, I definitely want King Cotton uh, because that gives us a plus 20 European intervention, which... Uh, the last time we did a Confederate campaign, I did get European inter intervention, and it became really essential to me having a chance in the game uh, for those armies to be out there. So we're definitely going to choose that. Uh, we're going to choose Southern Industrialization. Uh, this gives me a number of things, but one of the most important things it gives me is the option down the road to be able to abolish slavery, which is something I'd like to explore as a Confederacy if possible. And again, I think that's going to really help with... Um, with European intervention. And then I'm actually not going to choose Old Dominion. Uh, so we're actually going to um, make the capital stay in Montgomery, Alabama in this case. We're going to choose Arms Agents instead, which will uh, make the number of weapons available to the Confederacy increased by 50%. Springfield weapon types can be made available for production in the South's industry. So uh, those are the options we are going to go with. We are going to uh, manage everything ourselves so uh, AI is not going to build anything I'm going to have to handle all of that which is going to be a challenge I think uh, we're going to keep feuds off just because it kind of it gets a little much sometimes with the feuds we will keep readiness fog of war and order delays uh, so let's go ahead and dive in 
Okay, so right off the bat, policies are going to be key. Uh, I need to get a quick start on recruiting the military, so we're going to go after military policy right away. Um, actually, that's not the one I want. I want Militia Act, because we need to get to Militia Act 2 at least to get those uh, longer contracts up to at least two years uh, before I really start doing a lot of recruiting. This first one only allows one-year contracts. Um, so we'll do that. And now, of course, finances are a huge part of this because uh, those are how we're going to get these projects, which really define the game now, are the projects. Because the projects are how I get bigger unit sizes for my artillery and cavalry. Those are how I get new weapons. Those are how I get... Uh, the ability to build certain things like military academies. So these become really, really huge things. Uh, we're definitely going to have to invest a lot early on in military because that's where a lot of those things are going to come from. The weapons are going to be key for me because I'm going to be outnumbered heavily. Diplomacy is going to be important. I think we'll kind of go medium with everything until we start having financial issues. To where we can't do that. I am going to drop a little bit on politics. Well, no, because politics do more than just the policies. So we'll just have to keep an eye on the financial situation uh, for a while here and see what happens. So you can see we're currently showing a surplus right now of eight and a half million. Obviously, that's going to change because we don't really have an army yet. And once we start recruiting, we're going to need every bit of that. So I'm not going to try to spend more money or budget more money just because I know that that's going to change. So the Fort Sumter situation deteriorates. Once we uh, get to April, that's obviously going to be when everything kind of goes downhill. Uh, last economy report, things look good. Liabilities and debt. You can see uh, reports about everything that's going on. Uh, our economy lacks iron, food, and flour. Our stocks are full of cotton. So let's see if there are some places that we can't maybe build uh, some iron foundries because we're lacking in iron. We've got to find some good spots to do that. Oh, I've got auto placement on. Uh, that I think I will do because um, we'll, 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 we'll place the foundries and it'll automatically place them in good spots, uh, places where it makes sense to do that. Uh, we're going to build a couple of ironworks as well. Let's go ahead and queue up at least a couple of uh, factories. Okay, that'll do for now. All right, we've got Militia 1 already taken care of, so let's go ahead back to policies. Now, we can't do Militia Act 2 until after the war starts. Uh, so at this point, we've got a few choices. There's military one. Um, that'll allow greater subsidies in military, allows the financing of further military projects. We could go diplomacy one, which is what I think I'll do next. We do have these forts that eventually we're going to definitely want to garrison once we have the troops to be able to do that. Uh, I'm looking as well at federal buildings and right now there's no suitable location for those so we'll have to wait on those there we've achieved diplomacy one now we're just a couple of days away from the start of the war but we're still not quite there yet so uh, we can't choose the next militia act we'll go ahead and do oh let's see I think King Cotton down the road is going to help me a lot with what we need as far as European intervention. So we'll go ahead and choose that. We're getting into April now of 1861. We're just a couple of weeks away from the start of the war. Let's go ahead and take a look at the economy report now for April. Um, we still lack iron, food, and flour, but we do have things being built to help with that. Uh, export volume. We definitely have a, a trade deficit there. Last month, 14 buildings were constructed, uh, constructed four foundries, two ironworks, four factories, and four mills. Uh, our tax revenues increased by $134 million. 
Uh, let's look at the financial situation now. Uh, we now show a, a $78 million uh, negative finances, which is to be expected. A lot of that's because of the new buildings construction. Otherwise, we'd be in the positive. Okay, Fort Sumter has surrendered. So here it comes. Looks like construction has been completed on some of our building projects. Here is the war. So now you can see Virginia, Tennessee, Arkansas, North Carolina have seceded. Our capital is going to remain down here in Alabama, Montgomery. So that's what we need to protect. Uh, in fact, you can see here kind of our objects. Uh, and among those are to capture Kentucky and Missouri and get them to swing over to the Confederacy. So we're certainly going to try to do that. And let me look at policies real quick because we are uh, eight days away from King Cotton and then we'll go after Militia Act 2 at that point. For the first time, we have a project available. In this case, it's Springfield Rifles. Um, 750000 is what we have available for this. That will give us the ability to get the Springfield Rifle Musket which is huge. We've got to have rifled muskets uh, to keep up with what the enemy is going to put out there. Uh, you can see we have all of our initial kind of spawned armies that we get at the beginning. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and start actually recruiting our patron units as soon as I get uh, the Militia Act 2 policy and I can get two-year units. Religious unrest in the U.S. continues. Um... All right, I'm going to start queuing up some military hospitals because we know we're going to need them. Uh, we'll put one here around uh, Nashville somewhere. That's going to be an area we're going to definitely see some fighting. There's King Cotton 1 policy enabled. So let's go ahead back to our policies now. Get Militia Act 2 going. So in three weeks we'll have that. And that will put us probably mid-May. We'll be able to start recruiting some patron divisions and brigades uh, what were we doing we were building so let's go back to the building projects let's get a hospital going over here in uh, Virginia in the Richmond area for sure we'll probably need more than that but we'll at least get those two and we do already have the ability to place orders for Springfield rifled muskets so let's definitely do that but boy look at the time that is a long time to have to wait. Even for 10,000 of them, it's 164 days. 25,000 goes up to 260 days. It's almost a year. Oh my gosh, that's a long time to wait for those things. So um, I guess we'll do 10,000 of them. Hopefully we'll eventually get the ability to order other things too. Let's order up some 24-pounder howitzers as well. There's our available officers. We see a lot of the familiar faces. Uh, we'll definitely start recruiting them before long. Looking ahead, we are going to have to start going down the industrialization path because that's where we get to things like Slavery Restriction Act, which is going to give me a plus 20 to European relations. And we're definitely going to need that, especially to counter whenever the North goes with Emancipation Proclamation because that's going to give me a big hit to European relations. We'll have to counter that, and then eventually we can actually uh, get to Emancipation Proclamation, which is a plus 25 for European relations. We're about to hit May. We're going to see what the financial uh, situation is at that point. Eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these units that are in these pre-constructed armies, and I'll put them over to garrison duty once I can actually recruit my own units. So, um, All right, we're into May. We've got to keep an eye on that credit rating. We don't want, to want it to drop any lower than that. We may have to scale back our spending a little bit. Uh, we completed the two hospitals. Those are the only new buildings that we built. Uh, iron ore, wool, iron are the things that we are in desperate need of, which means we finally dealt with the grain situation, so that's good. Here come the blockades. Uh, that's something we're going to have to deal with. I'm not going to focus real heavily on my Navy in this one, I don't think, but we'll see. The situation may change. All right, 14 days for Militia Act 2. 
There we have it. Confederacy calls for volunteers, two-year contracts. Let me show you why we need to get going. The Union's already got 61,000 men in the field to our just 18,000. Uh, so we're obviously going to desperately need to start dealing with that. Um, going to start recruiting. We're going to start queuing those up. I don't know what I've got as far as availability goes. Let's take a look and see right off the bat just kind of what numbers we're looking at. Uh, not a lot. You can see we've got 12,000 troops in Alabama. That's uh, a decent amount. There's 143,000 out there. Georgia, Arkansas, Louisiana has a decent amount. Uh, Virginia, 14,000. Tennessee, yeah, we can, we can make an army out of this. All right, we've got another project uh, available here. Uh, there's administration reform. What would that do? Uh, shortens the time required for new policies and acts. So that's not a bad thing to have. Suppression population, I don't think that's really th something we need to worry about right now. I do like administration reform. Uh, reduces policy activation time by 5%. In the long run, I think that's really going to help. Uh, we've got our first big slew of recruitments happening. Uh, we're just waiting for those units now to get into the field. Uh, and he's already making a move with his Department of Pennsylvania, which is 13,000 men. Uh, I do have units coming for the Army of the Shenandoah. They're going to get up to 10,000, but right now they're only at 2,000. Army of Northern Virginia is at just under 5,000, but they'll be at 15,000 once the recruited units arrive. So if we can get those recruited units to arrive, we could pounce on the Department of Pennsylvania. Um, I'm moving the Army of Shenandoah just so I can get them to a place where maybe I can help um, help them fight with the Army of Northern Virginia here. So we're going to start moving Lee's army, even though they're really not in position to fight yet. Uh, but we just got to help out however we can. Uh, another policy available. Looks like trade deals will allow better prices when importing and exporting goods. Uh, economically, I think it's probably a good idea to go ahead and invest in that now. They've completed industrialization policy one, and we're going to go ahead back to our policies now. I think we might go right into industrialization two from there. Diplomacy two would get me better trade deals as well as some weapons import deals. Actually, that might be the way to go right now because I'd like to import some better weapons. I'm sending the Army of Northern Virginia to intercept the Department of Pennsylvania. We've got 11,000 men. 500 cavalry and 10 guns. So that puts me in pretty even odds with him. I think we can handle this. All right, it's a meeting engagement on the Bull Run battlefield. The Confederate Army, we're coming in from the eastern side of the battlefield. Looks like the Union's going to be coming in from over there in the west. We'll try to move up as best we can. I'd probably like to dig in along the historical areas there as much as possible we're not going to be able to defend at bull run he's going to probably come from this way we'll try to get into these heights as best we can dig in maybe behind these fences along here show you the order of battle for what we have here um we've got long streets division all australian volunteers they haven't completely been recruited yet but we do have um the 21st king james regiment of foot we have the first uh, Australian Volunteers and Jonathan's Rifles. Um, now, these are obviously the first battle for all of them. We do have Mississippi Rifles with um, Bonham uh, and then Springfield Muskets and then another set of Mississippi Rifles here. We've got the 33rd Virginia Emerald Guard uh, right there. And then we've got Ewell's Brigade and J Jones's Brigade. These were two old Army units. These were ones that existed at the beginning. Washington Artillery with 12-pounder howitzers. Uh, Anderson's battery has 24 pounder howitzers and then we've got Hampton's regiment with mixed cavalry weapons. So it's a small force but that's what we have available at the moment. Remove myself from the screen for just a second to show you uh, one of our created generals. Uh, I only created two in the end. Uh, Julius Caesar Napoleon. I thought that was a great name uh, for a general and he is actually in command of one of the divisions here in the Army of Northern Virginia. So. Um, no sign of the enemy so far. He may be up here defending this uh, objective point, which I'm going to probably send Wade Hampton to try and uh, get up to. We'll send him this way. We've got evade orders on him, so if he does run into the enemy, he's not going to try to engage. 
Uh, but we'll try to send him maybe up one of these back roads and see if we can't spot where the enemy is. Uh, in the meantime, we'll start moving Buckner's division up. We'll move Longstreet's division up. And we'll move Napoleon's division up. All right, so it looks like he is indeed going to be dug in right at the objective. So that's where we're going to have to hit him. So I'm going to I'm going to bring my whole army over that way. I'm just going to go up to that level, and we're going to bring them in right in up here. Uh, and we're going to prepare just uh, a main attack right along that line as best we can. Uh, he, he's got some woods. He's got some high ground there, but nothing I don't think that we can't handle. Now, I don't know how much combat we're going to get into on this first night. It's almost 8 o'clock already, but I decided to put Longstreet into position over here on his flank and kind of cause him to rethink what he's going to do. Uh, we're going to bring the Emerald Guard, I think, right up next to them. It's one of the larger units that I have. A lot of my brigades are only 1,500 men. I, I recruited them small uh, because I'm limited right now in numbers, and I wanted to try and get all of our patron units in if I could. We've got some guns here. I need to get them somewhere where, I, where they'll have some line of sight on the enemy. But like I said, it's getting dark. I think we're probably going to be just getting into position when time runs out on us for the day. Let's send out some skirmishers for Longstreet. They may fire the first shots of the war for us. If we get them out there for far enough. Well, we've got some artillery going here. We'll send those skirmishers forward. See if we can't drive off that artillery a little bit. Ah, and there's the end of the day. So no combat after all. Uh, the good news is, though, that we're going to be able to put our troops exactly where we want them here. Because uh, we do hold all of the ground that I was kind of moving into. Uh, so let's move. Let's stretch Longstreet into a single line. Actually, Buckner we're going to put over here. Put Longstreet in a single line. Get him moved up right here. Let's call the skirmishers back in, at least for the time being. And then get those guns into position somewhere where they can fire. And then we'll see what happens. It's 5 a.m. Actually, want initiative to be off as much as possible. We've got some Mississippi rifles, so that is really helpful in terms of range. This is a detachment here of uh, skirmishers. do have some cav back here if I need them. Remember, it's on highest difficulty, which means the, the casualties are going to be interesting because uh, it's set up to make as bad a casualty ratio for me as possible. up here. Alright, casualties are actually not great for me at the moment. He did pull his guns back, so that's good. Oh, we're losing guns like crazy, though. He must be doing some serious counter-battery fire. 
these guns aren't firing, they must not have line of sight. It's still dark, so it's kind of hard to see what's going on. We got Jonathan's rifles, 21st King's Regiment, or King James Regiment of Foot, and the All Australian Volunteers here. They are taking some cover behind an unfinished railroad. Taking more casualties than the enemy is. And that's just the way things are going to be, unfortunately, I think. I'm going to move the cab here and then move them up there. I'm going to try and drive off this skirmisher unit so I can move forward. They weren't kidding about those casualties. It is not good for me so far, even though I feel like it should be. I'm gonna hit those skirmishers and try to drive them off. Who's losing a lot of men? Walker. Dang. No, we, we drove off Sumner. That difficulty with the uh, casualties is no joke, man. Jeez. It's mostly Walker that's suffering the casualties right now. Oh, dang. Well, the holy cow. Bottom lost 474 men. Nine hundred casualties. Alright, Hampton, get out of there. This is the first battle of the war, so these guys are not gonna take many casualties before they break. That's just the way it's gonna be. Hampton just broke. Hampton was wounded. Right, let's call the skirmishers back. with these Mississippi rifles has a nice long range that allows him to hit the enemy when the enemy can't hit him. Yeah, this is not going well. There goes Bonham. He just broke. Get Yule up there with those Mississippi rifles and start pouring some fire into the flank of the enemy here. Right, I'm gonna call it Color Skirmishers back. Oh, we drove off another Union brigade. Yule's able to fire into Hooker, and Hooker can't return that fire, so that helps. Let's try and drive off these skirmishers if we can. Man, I'm trying to even these casualties out the best I can. I've lost 10%. There we go, that helps. Wade Hampton withdrew, not, not a surprise there.
All right, we're going to try to move in now and put a lot of fire on this first brigade, 3,000 men if we can. Hooker's pulling back because of the casualties he's taking. We're going to move Yule forward. I'm going to move Jones forward too. Alright, Walker, hang on for dear life, buddy. I don't know how long he's going to be able to hang on, but... I don't think we're going to win this battle. Try to rally Walker before it's too late. Uh, Jones, that's far enough, dude. Hold up, Walker. Don't go any further. Let him let him fall back. Let's hit this artillery though. We've got the range. All right, all right, all right. Things are looking up a little bit here. Let's speed things up a little bit. It's only six in the morning still. I gotta get Yule up here on this high ground. Let's bring McCulloch up with the Emerald Guard. Hang on, Walker. Just hang on, buddy. Alright, we drove off the guns. That helps. And actually, that helps, too, because now what I can do is I'm going to take McCulloch over here. We're going to try to get in on the 1st Brigade's flank, because they're already wavering a little bit. Longstreet demoralized. Ugh. That's not ideal. Yeah, let's see if this is enough to finish this guy off. Alright, let's drive Walker up even though he's low on morale. Beautiful. Alright, let's turn McCulloch. Actually, what I want to do here, I can't send the skirmishers because I just gave an order. Nice. All right, there we go. Enemy casualties are now higher than mine. Beautiful. Things are looking up a little bit. It looked pretty ugly there for a while. All right, I want to send skirmishers forward because I want to hit... This artillery. Those emerald guards, those uniforms look good. I like them. So Yule and DR Jones, these are the units that were kind of already in the army. And then over here, of course, we've got Jonathan's rifles. I think the Union might be falling back. Try and finish these guns off. We're about to grab the objective, too. I think we might have this. We just had to hang on at the beginning when things were not looking good. We had some setbacks early on, but we kept up the pressure. Did a little bit of maneuvering, and it seems to be paying off. His casualties have now surpassed ours. We're backing them into a corner. We're taking the objective. Beautiful. A big key there was the all Australian volunteers. How they hung on despite their casualties. And one of the things I want to do in this particular campaign is I want to recognize units 
for significant contributions on the battlefield. Uh, at the end of each battle, we're going to kind of review who performed the best, or maybe if there's somebody who did something especially heroic, you know, making a great stand while suffering a lot of casualties, like in this case, the All Australian Volunteers who lost a third of their men who very nearly broke but did not waver. Uh, and that's a key. Let's also look real quick and see. Uh, let's look at the combat report. I want to see if there's anybody inflicted. Uh, obviously, all Australian volunteers inflicted almost all the casualties in this one, but Napoleon's division did some damage as well. Um, Jonathan's rifles inflicted 863 casualties uh, at a cost of what? They only lost 49 men. That's incredible. Uh, of course, a lot of that has to do with those Mississippi rifles uh, and their ability to hit long range. But I feel like the first Australian vol uh, Australian volunteers are the unit I want to especially recognize at the end of this battle. Okay, so a couple of things we're going to do to start. First of all, we're going to promote General Longstreet, who's or Colonel Longstreet, I should say, who is a division commander. Uh, we're going to promote him to Brigadier General uh, for the performance on the field that day. Um, what is Lee right now? He's a Brigadier General. We're going to promote him to Major General. That does drop your stats a little bit. So sometimes it's better to wait on those to go up a little bit. I maybe should have done that in that case. Um, we're going to promote walker to brigadier general as well and then the first australian uh, volunteers here's uh, how we want to do this um, i think what we'll do is if we can we'll put an asterisk at the beginning uh, and that is it'll be kind of like a battle star or something you know we'll like we'll make it a citation when they have those and if they earn another one then they'll get a second one and that'll just help us to identify units that have contributed in some significant way we can look at the histories of the units and i want to do a little more of this make this a little more immersive this time around um, so you can see here uh, they were raised on may 19th 1861 in georgia on june 15th 1861 they fought in the battle of leesburg suffering 533 casualties inflicting 383 and we can see such histories for all of the different units. You can see what Frost's unit did there, which was amazing. Um, we can see that for every one of the units that fought in that battle. So really cool stuff. I uh, don't really see much happening here. Wade Hampton was wounded, so we need to replace him. Um, it's a small cavalry unit right now. So um, in fact, he's, he's down to just 299 men at the moment. All right, so the, the newly formed Army of Pennsylvania is trying to sneak in behind me. He went and crossed down here lower on the Potomac at Aquia Landing, uh, and he's making a move on Richmond. And we don't really have much defending Richmond at the moment. We have 1,500 men down there. There's no way they're going to be able to hold. Uh, we're going to have to, I think, pull everybody back to Richmond for the time being. It's going to take 12 hours, though, for Lee to get into position and his readiness is very poor at the moment so definitely a major problem and that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on I guess uh, I don't think we're going to be able to hold our troops in northern Virginia looking over here in the west we see there's an army of Indiana it's got 19,000 men army of the Mississippi uh, has got 3,300 working on 6,500 uh, so those are things we have to worry about the army of Pennsylvania is has actually moved through Richmond and is now trying to take Petersburg. Uh, so I don't know exactly what he's doing or how long he thinks he can operate like this because he's going to be cut off from supply. So at some point that's going to become an issue. Here's the current situation. The Union's already got 127,000 men in the field to just my 52,000. But of course we have a long, long way to go in this and I'm going to go ahead and uh, take some time to start queuing up the rest of our patron units. If you are a patron and you have a unit requested, when I hit like on your unit, that's me, that means I have recruited it. Once I've completed recruiting all of the requested patron units, uh, I will do a, a video showing you the order of battle and exactly where all of them are. But the next video in this uh, series will be a live stream. It will be scheduled for sometime later this week. I will let you guys know when that is. Uh, try to give you at least a day or two warning and schedule that so that you can be prepared. 
And if you don't watch it, that's okay. All of the live streams will upload as regular videos, so you'll still be able to watch them whether you're there for the stream or not. If you like this and you want to see more of it, please hit that like button. Please leave a comment. That helps YouTube know to recommend this to new people. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.